One of the new features for modeling and effects in 3ds Max 6 is the shell modifier. Here you can see I've got a simple object which has only one side to it as is typical for polygonal geometry. Now often you'll want to actually add a thickness to this depending on what you're building. Typically this can be very difficult as you can get some fairly convoluted surfaces that don't just easily do a straight extrusion. So in this case I can go in and add the shell modifier to it. I'm just going to run down here and grab shell and you can see that it's created this extrusion and I can control the inside extrusion or the outside extrusion. This is especially useful if you're doing fragmentation and you're trying to make sure the objects don't overlap each other or intersect each other. Being able to control which way it extrudes is very useful. Also I can control the number of segments in that extrusion very quickly and easily. And another nice thing is I can add a bevel to it. So not just a straight bevel but I can pick any spline and use that to control what the bevel looks like. So in this case here we've now got this rather complex bevel happening on the model. Now beyond beveling it, we also want to be able to control materials. So in this case, for instance, I can override material ID on the inside. So this is actually now grabbing a completely different texture for that. I can also override it on the edge and the outside. Now the thing I want you to notice is that it is smart enough to recognize that the mapping should line up as it travels across the, two, the three different chunks. And we do that simply by telling it how to deal with the edge mapping whether it's copying it, whether there's any, whether it's stripping it or interpolating it, it'll automatically do that. And when you're done, you can also have it automatically go in and select the edges, the faces, uh, whatever part you want, which will be more useful for the next portion of this operation. Six has added some new features to the skinning system. The main feature is the new mirror mode for skin weighting. In this case, you can see we have the character Sam Fisher from the game Splinter Cell by Ubisoft. And what we're going to do is start working on some of his skin weighting. Before we do that, let me just show you some of the problems in the character. So right now if I just slide through the animation, you can see it's an animation of him tumbling. And he just kind of rolls through. But the big problem is that I've already gone th through and done most of the weighting on the left side of the body, but the right side of the body is still set to the default envelope. So you get these really ugly curves through the leg. Well, what we want to do is start to fix stuff like that. So to do that, I'm just going to jump into the front view. I'm going to select the mesh. I'm going to go into Edit Envelopes and pick Mirror Mode. When I do that, you can actually see that a number of elements turn green and blue. This is to represent the left and the right halves of the body. Whenever they change color like this, it means that they have found the opposite version of themselves on the other side of the body. So in this case, you'll notice the mirror plane, which is this orange line, runs straight up the middle of the character. We could decide to put that on any axis, and we can also offset it. So for instance, if I offset the plane right now, you'll notice that all of the items turn red. This shows that they can no longer find their corresponding opposite version. So if I just take this back to one, back down to zero, you can see everything finds itself again. And now I can go in and start to make some changes. So the first thing to note is that there's a couple of envelopes that are dramatically off. And I can actually pick on one of these envelopes and you'll see it highlight the corresponding envelope so I know where they go. In this case, I can just say I want to paste all the green bones to the blue bones. And it'll automatically fix the blue bones to be the exact opposite version of the green ones. Now in this case, you won't see any changes because the character's actually been done with vertex weighting, not with the envelopes. So what that, this means is I have to do the mirroring on the vertex level, which is typically a much harder task. In this case, just to show what I mean, if I zoom in on the shins, you'll notice that the model is not laid out the exact same on both sides. This means that when a vertex goes to find its opposite member, it won't necessarily find it in the same place. So in this case, you can see these vertices are actually lit red. This represents the fact that they haven't found their opposite version. What I can do, though, is increase the mirror threshold, and you'll actually see them start to change color as I increase it. This means that they're actually finding their opposite member. You'll also notice that items like this little pocket here, or holster on the side, also don't match anything on the other side of the body but as I raise the threshold, it will actually average out those vertices based on closer vertices that have found matches. Once I've got that all set the way I want it, I can now go in, select the vertices that I want to affect. In this case, we'll just take all the ones down the middle here. There we go. And if I just shuttle along to a point where we can see the obvious problems in the leg, there it is there. All I have to do now is do a mirror paste, and you can see everything fix itself. The beauty of this is now I can do all the weighting on one side of the character and then very quickly go through and mirror it all over the other side, thus saving me half the skinning time. And this works even if the character is not perfectly symmetrical.